Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about typhoid fever in detail. So coming to the introduction of typhoid fever. Salmonella is a bacterium which causes the disease known as typhoid fever for an human beings and remember this typhoid fever will get affected only for the human beings but not for the animals okay and coming to the symptoms the symptoms can be seen uh, up to 6 to 30 days after the exposure after the exposure is nothing but the infection of the bacteria I mean the bacteria is nothing but here salmonella then the salmonella will enter into the human body then that is called as exposure after the exposure of bacteria called salmonella then 6 to 30 days of symptoms can be seen in the infected person and the symptom the main symptom which you can see in white skin people are rose colored spots on the skin only in the white skin people okay and this typhoid fever can be seen in both conditions mild condition as well as the severe condition so mild condition can be easily cured but severe condition cannot be cured because you have to admit in the hospital i mean for the person who is infected if it, if he is in the severe condition he should definitely admit in the hospital and how this severe can be caused because because of the negligence like you know taking no not taking proper medications and by taking proper medications it will it will cause a mild typhoid fever which can be up to 99 degrees celsius or 100 degrees sorry 99 degrees fahrenheit or 100 degrees fahrenheit but if you see in the case of severe typhoid fever it can be up to 104 degrees fahrenheit okay and the salmonella can be transmitted from one person to the other person you know the bacteria can be transferred from the one person to the other person and hence we will call that typhoid fever is a transmitter transmission disease i mean it get transmitted from one person to another person so uh, to avoid the transmission you have to cure uh, you, you know as much as possible and the salmonella uh, will uh, will get attacked into the blood as we know that the blood will pass all parts of the body it will affect more in the small intestine so in, as if uh, as if you see when you get affected with the fever you will immediately get vomitings right because the salmonella bacterium will firstly affect in the intestine only okay so come into the discovery William Bird is a scientist and he is an English physician and epidemiologist and he discovered that there is a poison which causes the infectious disease. He just gave a clue that's it when in 1838 and next Robert Koch and Lois Pasher they both gave the proper definition of the bacteria. They just discovered the bacteria presence of the bacteria. I mean if you see the case of Pasher, pasteurization is a technique you know he discovered the technique by the bacteria lactobacteria and you know you know the to total thing which has happened by the discovery of Robert Koch as well as the lowest pressure and this was the done this was the but they didn't discover the typhoid fever bacteria they just discovered there is a presence of bacteria up to here which I am explaining and next this was done up to 1838 but come now coming to the 1880 Carl Joseph Eberth is a scientist he is a german pathologist and bacteriologist he had done much research on this typhoid fever and then he concluded a bacteria but he didn't give any name to that bacteria but he concluded that bacteria and next this was done in the 1880 coming to the 1884 theodore august grafke he is a scientist who confirmed the birth research what what is the research which was done by the Eberth? He confirmed there is a presence of a bacteria, but he didn't name the bacteria. But if you see in the case of Grafke, he confirmed the re Eberth research and he named the bacteria as Salmonella enterica. enterica. Right? So this is about the discovery part. So now coming to the Salmonella bacterium. Let us talk about the bacterium. Okay? The Salmonella is a rod-shaped bacterium and it is a gram-negative bacteria and it belongs to the class Enterobacteriaceae. And now coming to the size it ranges with the diameter of 0 0.7 to 1.5 micrometers and with the length of 2 to 5 micrometers and flagella is peritrichus in form so what is maybe peritrichus peritrichus is nothing but it is a position i mean it is a form where there will be a many huge flagellates which will be surrounded toward the surface of the body of bacterium like this there will be many flagellates which will be attached towards the surface of the bacterium as if you see in the case of diagram and it is a chemotrophic bacteria chemotrophic bacteria is nothing but which can prepare uh, you know which can generate its own atp by oxidation process uh, by using organic substances okay and normally this uh, you know salmonella are, are in the presence of many species i mean the totally six species of salmonella will be present and here I'm going to explain you about the two important species here that is Salmonella entrica and Salmonella bongri. And if you see the case of another species like you know Salmonella typhi, Salmonella para typhi, and which causes the which these are where they are the main cause of this typhoid fever. 
okay so now let us see let us talk about the causes this typhoid fever is caused by the salmonella enterococcus stereotype of typhi salmonella typhi bacteria and it is caused by salmonella paratyphi also by drinking and eating contaminated food and water and water which contains high amount of negative bacteria so these all are the causes which causes you know these all are the causes uh, of this typhoid fever so negative bacteria is nothing but here the salmonella typhi i mean or else the any other species of course all of these species cause the same fever called as typhoid fever now coming to the symptoms and remember the incubation period is 1 to 2 weeks and the duration of illness is 3 to 4 weeks that's nothing but uh, you know the days how many days this typhoid fever will be up to 3 to 4 weeks the duration of illness and coming to the major symptoms which you can see the person who is infected with this type of disease known as typhoid fever are poor appetite headaches generalized aches and pains fever as high as 1 or 4 degrees fahrenheit which i have said you in the introduction part there will be two types of typhoid fever which is called as mild fever as well as a severe fever right as i have said you in the mild it will be with 99 degrees fahrenheit or 100 degrees fahrenheit but if you see in the case of severe it will be of 1 or 4 degrees fahrenheit as when the patient is affected with 1 or 4 degrees fahrenheit uh, fever then he should definitely admitted to the hospital or else in some cases they also may lead to death okay and in their symptom is lethargy so next diarrhea chest congestion abdominal pain so these are the symptoms which you can see in the person who is infected with this disease called typhoid fever and next coming to the diagnosis and this is a normal basic thing this this is a point which is a normal basic thing where people know before whereas if you read it bacteria will get multiplied in the blood cells normally uh, if you if you bath in a pro- improper area like in a lake as well as in the oceans or else ponds anywhere if you bath un- with in a pr- improper places then contaminated food if you consume contaminated food or water then immediately the bacteria negative bacteria have said you read that negative bacteria is nothing but this uh, you know t- uh, this uh, paratyphoid paratyphi or typhi salmonella typhi which i have said you all of this bacteria will enter into your body and then your body will get affected how it will get affected first it will enter into your blood cells and it will get multiplied in the blood cells that's nothing but you know that uh, bacteria will undergo you know, you know about this uh, how this bacteria will get divided right by binary fission and and by that process the it get multiplied in the blood cells and in the liver spleen and bone marrow in you know in the regions of of this liver spleen and bone marrow it will get multiplied which one the bacteria which will enter from the external environment into the human body and bacteria invade into the gall bladder biliary system as well as the lymphatic tissue of the bowels and this is a basic thing which you have to know okay and now how the diagnosis will be taken they will t- they will test the stool samples blood as well as the urine and they will check the amount of bacterium presence i mean if the amount of bacteria is in less content then they will consider the disease as a mild disease of typhoid and whether the the sample consists of more amount of bacteria then it will they will consider this typhoid fever in the severe condition okay coming to the treatment normally antibiotics will be given for a person who is infected with this disease and coming to that antibiotics ciprofloxacin ceftriaxone cipro azithromycin dose pack Zithromax, Ampicillin, Zmax. So normally these are the antibiotics, antibiotic drugs which will be given for this infected person of typhoid fever. And preventions. What are the best preventions you have to do uh, to prevent this disease of typhoid fever? You have to consume hygienic food and water and good sanitation. So this is about the typhoid fever. Hope you like my explanation. If you like it, just do like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts regarding this typhoid fever, please comment in the comment box. I am ready to clarify your doubts immediately.